Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we are going to be going over the basic syntax for CSS, cascading style sheets. So again, all CSS does, all cascading style sheets do, is they basically format the HTML that you will be printing to a page. So you can use the basic H1 tags, H2 tags, P tags, so on and so forth, to print text to a page in HTML, uh, but if you want that text to have colors, if you want that text to have borders, if you want that text to be underlined, any kind of formatting like that, you're going to need to use CSS. In order to be able to do that with CSS, you're simply going to need to understand the basics of the syntax. And so that's what I'm going to be teaching you today in today's class. So a bit of a warning warning here for today's class. Uh, we are at that point in CSS when I am teaching you things and you kind of have to understand multiple different subjects uh, before any of those subjects fully make sense. Again, in the technology world, one of the, the, the things can be a pain, that can be a pain in the butt is that I have to explain this, but when I'm explaining this, if you don't understand this, you're not going to fully understand the first thing. So I have to explain this so that then, then I can teach this. And then once I've taught this, then the first thing actually makes a hell of a lot more sense, right? We're, we're kind of in that area with CSS. So what I'm going to be explaining to you the basic syntax for today, I'm going to be showing you uh, basically how you can define how tags are supposed to look in the HTML documents. But the thing with CSS is there's multiple ways to call CSS. So you can call CSS from an external style sheet. So you can have a style sheet that all your HTML documents uh, reference back to you. You can have your CSS actually in the B in the head of your HTML document, or you can even have your CSS in a line. So when you have your P tag or your H1 tag or whatever what else, uh, you can actually have the CSS in a line uh, to define how the font is supposed to look. So I'm not actually going to be getting to that uh, in this particular class. That will be in the next video when, I'm got, when I will talk about external style sheets and how to actually insert CSS into your HTML document. So for today, all I'm showing you is the basic syntax so that when you get to the next class, everything is going to make a lot more sense. So uh, if at the end of today's class, you kind of understand a little bit, you're like, oh, okay, so that's what a selector is and that's what a property is and that's what a value is, but I'm not really sure how this fully works. That's okay. That is completely okay. With the next class, when I show you how to actually put the CSS into an HTML document, all of this should come together and make a lot more sense for you. So with that, let's go over to the computer and I can explain how this works. So here we are at my demonstration system. Again, I'm using a MacBook Pro, so I am using text edit in order to write out uh, this CSS and HTML. Again, to write out CSS or HTML, all you need is a text editor. So if you're in the Windows world, you can use Notepad. Again, the Mac world, you can use text edit. In the Linux world, you can use gedit, nano, a vim, or whatever else. Uh, for this particular project today, I have saved this as a .html. So all of the CSS and all of the HTML are contained in one document. Uh, so when you look at this document here, uh, basically we're going to open up with the HTML tag. We are then going to open up with the head tag. And inside the head tag is going to be the style tag. Uh, so basically everything uh, within the style tags is going to define what the CSS should look like for the rest of the document. Then you're going to go down here. You're going to close the head. You're then going to open the body. And then basically you're going to simply type out your HTML like you normally do but the formatting for this HTML is now going to be controlled by what you have written up here. Again, if you don't fully understand this style tag and how this works, don't worry. We will talk about this more in the next class but I just want to give you a bit of an overview here. Uh, so when we go down here, uh, basically we're going to open up the style tag. Again, we'll talk about that later. Uh, and then we have the different, what are called selectors uh, that we are going to modify for today. So again, in the uh, HTML world, everything is defined by a tag. And so when we were talking about a selector in CSS, essentially what we're talking about is the name of the tag. So this is the body tag, right? So when we're talking about the body tag. This is going to modify 
modify what the body tag looks like. Now you will notice uh, there's no little arrow brackets or anything else here. All you're going to do is ju just the name of the tag itself. And this is going to be called a selector. Uh, past that, you're going to open uh, the squiggly bracket. Uh, then you're going to go down to the next line. And from here, what you're going to do is you're going to put in the property that you want to modify. Uh, so whether you're dealing with the body, whether you're dealing with an image, whether you're dealing with the, the heading tags or whatever else, there are going to be different properties that you can modify. Uh, basically, you just have to do a Google search or look in your paper or look in your book to, to see what uh, properties you can modify. But there are predefined properties you can modify. So for here, the property that we want to modify is the background color. So the property is called background uh, hyphen color. Then you're going to separate this with a colon, so a normal colon. And then after that, you're going to say what the value of that property should be. So the background color for body, we want this to be orange for this particular example. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to use a semicolon as a delimiter. So a delimiter basically says this is one value, this is one set. And then you can go to the next, you can go to the next, you can go to the next, you can go to the next. If you forget to put the semicolon there, uh, you can run into problems. So just like PHP and all the other coding languages, know what the hell your delimiters are and make sure that you actually write them out. Uh, then from there, we are going to close the squiggly bracket. And so basically what this is going to say is the selector body, the tag body, we want the background color to be orange. And that's it. Then we're going to go down to the H1 tag, the heading one tag. We're going to open the squiggly bracket. So for the H1 tag, we want the color to be colon white. So this will make H1 white now. Again, we use the semicolon delimiter. We go to the next um, property that we want to modify and we're going to do text hyphen align. So we are going to align the text and we are going to align it to the center. Uh, again, we do the delimiter of a semicolon and then we close the squiggly bracket. Bracket. Then we go down here for the H2 tag, again, the selector of H2, the H2 tag. What I've done is I've actually modified the background color uh, for where that text is actually printed out. So there's a background color for the entire page. And then behind the lines that are written in H2, we want to modify the background color to be something else. So background uh, hyphen color, uh, do semicolon, and then we are going to say yellow. Uh, you will no notice here, um, I put a space in between. You should put a space, but with things like this, the white space doesn't matter that much. Um, so you put yellow, and then you do the semicolon, and you close that. Uh, for H3, so the selector, the tag for H3, we're opening it up again, and you can do a border. Again, I just want to show you that there are a lot of things you can do with CSS. CSS opens up a massive world of what you can do with uh, with formatting on an HTML document. So for this, just for craps and giggles, I just want to show you, you could do a border. So we're going to do a border and that's going to be a five pixel border of solid blue. So there's going to be a border around the lines of text that are H3. Again, we're going to do that semicolon delimiter and we're going to close the squiggly. Uh, then we're going to come down here to P. We're just going to modify this a little bit. You can modify the font family. So that's a big thing for a lot of people is they don't like whatever the default font is for HTML. So you can modify what you want that font to be. Arial, Times New Roman. There's a number of different fonts that come standard with CSS. You can modify it. So again, font, uh, font uh, hyphen family colon again. So we're just going to say that for P here, it should be, be Arial. Uh, we're going to do the semicolon delimiter. Then you can go down, you can actually modify the size of the font. So for the P tags here, we want to say how big the text should be for, for the P tags. Uh, and so for this, we're just going to say 40 pixels just because. Again, we're going to uh, close it, the, the close that with the delimiter, and then we're going to close the, the P tag uh, with the squiggly bracket. We are then going to close style. And again, for this point, we're not really going to worry about that a lot. Then we're just simply going to come down here in the body. Now all we're going to do is we're going to print out H1. This is what H1 looks like. H2, this is what H2 looks like. H3, this is what H3 looks like. And P, this is what P looks like. So again, the HTML itself, when you're referencing an external style sheet or a style that are in the head of the HTML document, you are literally just going to simply uh, type out the normal tag and then your web browser will know what to do with those normal tags. Uh, from there, all we're gonna do is I have this CSS syntax.html uh, document sitting on my desktop. I'm going to double click 
And when I do, this is what the text looks like based off of the C CSS. Uh, so we go here again, let me just uh, put this over a little bit. And uh, what we can see is uh, so the background color, oops, let me <laughs> oh, let me modify this a little bit. Oh, it's always a pain to show things. Okay, here we go. Uh, so what we can see is uh, we have here style, body, background, color equals orange. And so what we can see here is the body, the background color is now orange. H1, we want the color to be white. We want the text to be aligned to center. H1, the text is white. The, uh, the text is aligned to center. H2, we want the background color to be yellow. So what you'll notice here is the default HTML formatting stays in place. So since I'm not saying what color the H2 should be, since I'm not saying what font it should be, whatever the default is, that remains how it is. The only things that get modified is whatever I've stated within the CSS. So it's still in black, it's still aligned to the left, so on and so forth. But because I've said background hyphen color is yellow, then I get this yellow bar behind the H2 text. We then go down to the H3. Uh, this just shows us we have a border that's five pixels of solid blue. So this is H3, we get a border of, um, five pixels uh five pixels that's solid blue and then if we go down to p the font family is uh arial so if you take a look at this you'll notice you'll notice this font looks different than what the default uh, font is. So that's the Arial font. Uh, and then the font size is 40. So you can see, again, even at normal size, uh, it is a large font size. So this is P, that's what you have printed out. And so this is the basic syntax of how you're going to be writing out CSS. So this is called the selector. Again, in CSS world, this is called the selector. Just think of it as the tag. Again, the body tag, the H1 tag, the H3 tag, the P tag, the image tag, whatever whatever else basically so what you're saying is this is the tag then you're going to open up a squiggly bracket then you're going to say what property you want to modify so there's a whole bunch of different properties that are available to you again do a google search or whatever else to, to see what properties are available to you and then you do colon and then you do the value and again this is one of those things you just again it's paint by numbers right you you see what property you can modify you can see what values are available to you and then you plug in the one you want that's really all there is to it uh, then you close with a semicolon and then uh, then you're going to close with that squiggly bracket and this is the basic syntax of CSS for you so there you go now you know the basic syntax for CSS if you don't fully understand how to use CSS yet that is completely fine in the next class I will talk about external style sheets and that type of thing but now at least you know what the basic syntax is so you have the selector or basically what the tag name is you have the the property you have the value again it's all paint by number this is not you're not pulling stuff out of your butt. You're not like, you're not imagining things on the fly. This is paint by numbers. You have a tag, you do a Google search, you see what properties are available for the tag. You pick one of those properties. You see what values are available for that property. You pick one of those and that's all you do. This is one of those places where a lot of people try to be like too creative. They try to get to be too smart and it's no, it's, it's paint by numbers. You got a tag, you got properties, you got values. Just plug in the ones that work best for you. One of the ways that CSS can become very interesting for you though, is do remember whenever you're dealing with a web application or a website, you're having multiple coding languages uh, actually all come together uh, in order to create that site. So one of the interesting things with CSS is you can have CSS be written by things like PHP or some kind of a backend programming language. So when you're talking about things like font size, when you're talking about other uh, other properties and values on your HTML page. Remember that a backend coding language can actually dynamically write an HTML page for you. And as it dynamically writes that HTML page for you, it can also do things such as dynamically write your CSS. So if people are going to your website and let's say uh, they want fonts to be bigger, they could do things like select a larger font size. And then whenever they go to a new web page on your, on your site, when the PHP goes to write that HTML page, 
page, it can then modify what the font size should be when it's dynamically printing it out. So uh, the default might be, I don't know, 12 pixels uh, for text on a page. But if you're dealing with older people, they might be able to modify and say, I want a larger text size. And so when that text is printed out on the page, it is something like a, a 20 or a 40 pixel, again, whatever the hell it is uh, that you decide. So that's one of the ways that CSS beca can become even more valuable. There are a lot of properties and values that you can add to your HTML document to make it look a lot more, a lot prettier and a lot more functional. But beyond that, do remember that HTML document can be written dynamically by a backend uh, programming language, PHP, Python, something like that. And so then you can even have even more interesting things that you can do with the, the, the formatting to make your site or your web application even more usable for your end users. So those are some of the things to think about. But again, with a lot of this stuff in the coding world, it's all paint by numbers. So uh, if you want to modify a tag, whatever it is, do a Google search, see what the properties are, see what the values are, plug it in and go from there. As always, I enjoyed doing this video and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.